All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're live. Uh, you got the aired out podcast from the ASB Financial Studios and Fly on the Wall Productions, Main Street, Barry, Vermont. Uh, heard from Roger Hill this morning, and he's saying if you love the cool weather, uh, embrace it now because we've got uh, temperatures well into the 80s and maybe even the lower 90s pushing its way into New England and certainly into Vermont by the weekend. Uh, so with a uh, almost a 70% humidity rate, so it is going to feel even hotter than that. So if you have any outdoor projects, do them today and uh, relish in the, uh, in the cool, dry air because it won't be here too much longer. Uh, right next to me. Uh, in the aired out studios this morning is Brandy Tracy. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, it is an absolute pleasure to meet you. I have been hearing about you, I think, for about a year now. Mm -hmm. I think about a year. And uh, we should probably uh, preface by saying that uh, we were hoping to get uh, Caitlin Wheatley in here as well this morning, but uh, she's got uh, a situation at work, so mm -hmm. she's not able to make it. But. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's called what now what is <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah she's a busy lady very busy lady um that is true we'll give her that but we uh we appreciate <laughs> we appreciate everything she does and uh she's a big supporter uh of all of this um she is. with with what's going on uh the vice president of the Billtown wheelers uh, June 4th is a couple of weeks away. This is going to be the third annual uh, Stephen Tracy II ride, um, which is uh, an ATV ride uh, that uh, begins, I think, right in Williamstown, right? Yeah, right at the Roadhouse. Right at the Roadhouse. Yeah. Begins and ends there. So we'll go on a trail and come back. Now, so how, how, how long does this take to do this ride? Um, I think last year was about an hour. Okay. I, I'm not sure that they've officially decided on the trail this year. Yeah. An hour, hour and a half probably. And then what happens uh, afterwards when it's when it's done? So afterwards, um, well, before there will be tables set up inside the roadhouse. We'll have a silent auction, lots of great prizes, um, and T-shirt sales for like this shirt yeah. here. We'll have new ones for this year. Okay. Um, and then go on the ride, come back, and the roadhouse is going to have uh, barbecue food for sale. We'll have cornhole out. The, um, people can play cornhole. Um, and then the silent auction will continue until 1230 and we'll uh, announce winners then. And all right. So all of the uh, ATVs, all the side-by-sides are going to be meeting up right there? Yep. In that, in that it's perfect spot yep. for it. Yeah, it is. Great parking lot right mm -hmm. there. Um, so tell me about your son, Stephen, um, eighth grade, Williamstown. Mm -hmm. Yep. 14 years old. Yes. Died by suicide. Yes, he did. Uh, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, um, it's it's the right time to be talking about this, especially. Uh, I think we should probably talk about it a, a whole hell of a lot more, frankly. I um, agree, yeah. It needs to be more normalized. Normalized. Mm -hmm. And and that's one of the things that, you know, we, we attempt to do here at the podcast. I don't know that we're successful 10 out of 10 times, but we, we try to chip away at some of the stigmas that are attached to various things in our culture. Mm -hmm. And this is certainly one of them. Uh, we've talked about it in the past, and it's, it's not the... Uh, you know, it certainly isn't a fun thing to to talk about, but it's absolutely necessary. Are you are you? And we're going to talk about Stephen here in a second. But mm -hmm. are you finding that more and more kids are are talking about suicide um, as just a real thing? Is just something that it's it's okay to say the s word? I think the kids that I encounter are because they're friends of Stephen and they lost him and, you know, maybe they heard things or saw things that they're just like, oh, he's just kidding. He's, you know, he's so sarcastic or whatever. Yeah. Um, so now I think that they're more aware and, um, you know, checking in with people and yeah, yeah. talking, talking about it, mental right. health and suicide. Yeah. Openly. Mm hmm. 
I, I don't know. It, it just seems like, um, and I don't know how old you are, but it just seems like people who are, you know, 40s and 50s, they, uh, we just grew up in, grown up in the 80s and stuff. You just, uh, you just didn't really. It was a secret. They just, they just died. Yeah. Yeah. People died by suicide. Yeah. Or, or it was, you know, there was just this, you know, massive uh, tragedy that led up to it and, and, Mm -hmm. and somehow justified it. Uh, If, if you can say such a word, I don't know that you can, but um, that, that gave reason behind, behind someone uh, that, that didn't want to live anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's still true that people often think that there's only one reason like what's the reason that a yeah. person took their own life but it's really so many factors it's so many factors mm-hmm. and uh, you know I've I have watched I don't, I don't I can't even tell you how many podcasts about about this um, that I've had on um, in the car driving listening to this where mental health experts are talking more and more and more even pre-covid about the fact that uh just simple genetics simple Mm -hmm. brain chemistry um the way we're we're wired um can can get give make us predisposed to to something like this you know, and then and then look at look at all the the chemicals in the in the medications that that we take. Uh, mm-hmm. No matter who who you are, what age you are, that can change up that brain chemistry and and get you thinking. You know, in a way that's maybe not consistent with your your personality, right? And yeah. your character. And professionals say that there's like three areas. So there's your genetics. You know, if you've lost someone to suicide already, a family member. Or a friend, or um, I guess that's not really genetics, but you know, or if you have mental health concerns or problems, bipolar, any of those things, yeah. And then the other area is, um, you know, like the situational environmental stuff. If you're being bullied, if you're right, if you've been sexually abused, if you know all those other things that right. could be a factor, and then the your, third, at- your atmosphere, right? And then the third, the third category is if you have means, you know, if you. If you're in that position and you have access to a gun or you have access to a medicine cabinet full of pills, sure, um, those are like it's the tri- trifecta of. That's it right there. The immediate, yeah. Like if you can take away any of those one things, it could stop. I think I, I you know, a couple of things. Number one, I find it, uh, and I was thinking this when I was driving in this morning. I find it. Um, so profound that you have it in you to come in here and speak openly uh, on this podcast about this and I don't I don't know that I I could do that Uh, I think that's absolutely remarkable it says so much about you Um, uh, and I wanted to get that right out I also f- find it um, so remarkable that, and it seems like the older I get, the more I see this, how well mental illness can be masked, mm-hmm. disguised, um, justified. You know, oh, that's just their personality. That's mm-hmm. just the, that's just the way they are. Yeah. Um, and we all walk around with, um, no, not all of us, but many of us walk around with labels. Oh, we're, we're bipolar or we're de- depressed or we suffer from anxiety. And, mm-hmm. and um, I mean, th- the reality is I think most of us, most of us are. It's just in this world. It's just the way our society is. But to be able to to get to a level where, you're really not well, but you're you're so professionally disguising it mm-hmm. as something else right. is incredible. I mean, I just you know tell me tell me about tell me about Stephen, fourteen year old 
in the eighth grade mm-hmm. friends friends yeah. at- had friends had a girlfriend had a girlfriend yep um personality <laughs> yes yeah he was um a goofball he was a goofball <laughs> he liked um and looking back now i think you know the uh, he liked attention he liked being um the class clown basically yeah, yeah um sure and that probably was masking things that he didn't want yep. other people to see yep um but yeah he he was a great kid very compassionate always even even as a, a toddler he just was super compassionate and um didn't want to upset other people or hurt other people's feelings which um i think probably was part of it he didn't want to be a burden by letting us know that he was really struggling um so that that probably was a factor and you know we look back and say oh he was such an easy kid but um where does her so you you have a husband yep and a daughter yep uh kylie yep uh steven's sister yeah they're best friends so were there were there any what was there anything that was going on in in Stephen's life that led up to this was was there anything um well he he had experienced some trauma when he was younger um and i think he then um you know talked to some people about it at school and then there became some bullying issues a little bit um you know teasing him about things um I think, you know, a lot of people will say that it was COVID, you know, Stephen, Stephen took his own life because of COVID. Um, and I, that probably was a factor, the isolation, because he was incredibly social, super social. Like the rest of us are like, don't talk to me. And Stephen's like, hey, everybody. Wow. You know, um, wow. But, you know, we, we were allowing him to do some things, you know, have a friend over or go out and play basketball or whatever. Um, but he also had been talking about being depressed he had adhd so i think that could be a factor too um he um we tried medication for antidepressants and i think that it was the wrong mix for him um because it seemed like he got more depressed in that time and we had an appointment with his psychiatrist the next week um but i don't know i don't know what happened um in that day you know, leading up to that, he he got angry at us, which is rare. Like he, you know, he could he would get mad, but not not for very long. He'd go to his room and then come back and be like, "Yeah, sorry." Um, but he was mad, and he sort of took a walk by himself, and it just it felt wrong. Like something's going on with him, but I didn't push it. My husband didn't push it. We're just like, just give him space. We just have to give him space, like we always do. Yeah, and a be typical fine. fourteen year old. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. It's, um, you know, they're coming into puberty. They've got, exactly. you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, but then he came inside. He ate dinner. We, um, he how was, was. How was he during dinner? Good. He, you know, I, I think he even had seconds. <laughs> you know, he, mm. he ate. Um, he pulled tractors competitively. He was supposed to be going to Hershey, Pennsylvania that year. But it, everything got canceled because of covid so that was kind of a bummer so we were talking about you know getting him his own atv so at least he'd have something to do we had our atvs he could go out on the trails with us he um he and i started doing his license that night like taking the test online um and then he just said "Uh, i'm gonna go to bed and yeah okay and that was a year ago two years ago yesterday i'm sorry two years ago yesterday yeah <clears throat> this has got to be a, a a shitty time of year for you. Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, but I I, I can I could see in in your eyes uh, a level of pain, but also a level of um. By God, I I, I want to do something about this. I want to bring awareness mm-hmm. to this, and I'm um. I'm not afraid to 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 talk about it and and maybe um prevent another mom another dad um losing their child Mm -hmm. absolutely because really um when it comes right down to it 
I don't think there's anything worse that that could happen to anyone. I mean, I'd rather I'd rather lose a leg. I'd rather you know everything. You know, I mean, just can't imagine. Can't imagine. Um, and frankly, don't want to imagine. But here you are sitting here um, with a level of courage um, that is insurmountable, frankly. Um, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. You have now become involved with the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. Yes, AFSP. AFSP. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Is that something that you, you got involved with right away? We Well, Stephen passed away in May. Um, and then I just, you know, there's not really information out there. If you lose a child by cancer or something like that, you've got doctors, you've got tons of information. Bingo. Um, so I just was doing research and um, buying books. And I just stumbled across their the AFSP website online. And found out they were doing a walk. It's called the Out of Darkness Walks in Burlington. And that was in October. Um, actually ended up being um, at home because everything was closed because of COVID. But um, so, yeah, that's when we got involved was in October after Stephen passed away, just doing the walks. And then last year I started helping with um, tabling events. So we could go to, you know, parades or different farmers markets are just different events where they allow tables to be set up with information about suicide prevention and how to help and um, conversations people can have with their friends if they seem to be struggling um, yeah and we've done the walk every year with a team I'm, I'm guessing that there's um, th that's incredible by the way but I'm, I'm guessing that there's plenty of parents that when they experience this they very soon take a hard left or a hard right, mm -hmm. and a hard right being we're going to be activists against suicide. Mm -hmm. We're going to be proactive about suicide prevention. We're going to get involved. We're going to do walks. We're going to make shirts. We're going to have the Billtown Wheelers involved. We're going to have fundraisers. We're going to bring awareness to this. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring this to the forefront in our community, and we're going to make sure that everybody knows about it and that they speak with their kids and that they're super dialed in. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other parents um, that uh, I, I'm guessing uh, just want to put this behind them. They don't want to be reminded of it all the time. They want to kind of forget about it. I'm sure that's possible, yeah. 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 Or they don't know what to do. Or they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So here you are facing this uh, head first, face first. Um, I think that's amazing. Thank you. I think that's amazing. I think, you know, it could be a totally different story if I didn't have another child at home, too. You know, if I'd lost my only child. That's right. Who knows which turn I would have taken. You don't but. know. Yeah. And now it's just my goal to make sure people don't forget him. That's that's my biggest fear is people are going to forget Stephen. Um, and now you're going to make me cry. But well, <laughs> but listen, I, 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 it, first of all, it, it, it's fine to cry. Uh, mm -hmm. And we don't have any uh, expectations. And I don't think our community has any expectations for you uh, to to uh, not be emotional about something like this. My mm -hmm. God. Um you have a uh, community in Williamstown yeah. that is, I don't know, I don't know what's up with Williamstown, but there's, and Raylene and I talk about this often, there's just something about that town. And I'm sure there's other towns in Vermont th that may be similar, but man, when there's something going on in Williamstown, that community rallies hardcore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have over 100 ATVs come out for the ride every year. It's amazing. We've raised thousands of dollars to give to a graduating student. Yeah. Well, yeah. and of course that was going to be a question of mine is <laughs> uh, how much how much per ATV and and where's the money go? It doesn't cost anything to come ride. The money all comes from selling t-shirts like like the one I have here. We have um 
wow. sponsors on the back. So the T-shirts don't cost the club anything. It, um, all the sponsors pay for the shirts to be made. Yeah. So the money comes from the T-shirts, comes from the silent auction that we'll have. We've got tons of great products for the silent auction. Um, yeah, yeah we've and got, we've I've got, got more list. to add to it too. Yeah, we've got you know Pamper Chef and color. We've got like three different color street nails that people. We've got Richard Powell's beef um, gift certificates, lots and lots of homemade items, oh. um, some gift certificates. One of Stephen's friends. Um, so his favorite restaurant was Big Fatty's down in White River. Okay. Um, super super good. After he passed away, they named a burger after him. Really? We, yeah. So it's the Stevens. Um, Stephen Tracy Wheelhouse Tractor Burger, and it has like pepper jack cheese and jalapenos. And um, wait a second, wait a second. Now, <laughs> you're talking about food now. You really got my attention. What's the name of this restaurant? Big Fatties. And it's in White River. In White River. Yep. I gotta go there. You do have to go there. You say burger and jalapenos in the same sentence. Yeah, and beef gris- brisket oh. on it. Oh, it's super good. Really? Yeah, it's really good. There, everything there is good. Um, but. Uh, so one of his friends bought a gift certificate there to raffle off. A ton of his friends went down there yesterday for dinner, um, wore all really? their shirts. Really? Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, we have a lot of great prizes. So these 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 kids are now 16. 16-ish. Yep. They're okay. all driving. They're all driving. Yep. And they miss, they miss him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they message me all the time. Do they? You know, some of his friends are texting me every week, just checking in, how you doing? Um, they're amazing. Yeah. He'd be so happy about that. Yeah, he would. These kids have all learned something at a young age that, frankly, I <clears throat> never did, um, which is what we were talking about earlier, how you cannot be well but walk around Mm -hmm. with a very well demeanor, Mm -hmm. character, personality. Um, And these kids have learned that. Right, yeah. Firsthand. So they know. They probably watch out for each other Mm -hmm. and and probably will continue to. And probably that's going to be part of who they become as adults and parents. I hope so, yeah. Um. This is the third ride coming up on June 4th. Yep. Do, is it, is it, is it, it, it's only, this is only the third, but mm-hmm. do you think this, this one will be a little, um, I don't want to say easier, but do, do you think the edge, the, the edge I think will come off? So, yeah, the first year I didn't even get out of our buggy. I couldn't tell you who was there. Wow. I no. You didn't know which end it was up. We just went, and it was, you know, with, within a month probably of his passing. Um, and our daughter moved out three weeks after that. She graduated high school. So, like, it was just a really hard time. Um, not blaming you, Kai. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, last year was a little easier. I went and helped set up some shirts, and um, we had uh, all these bracelets all these bracelets made. Yes. I don't know if you probably can't see them. but Yeah, well, um, yeah we can. So, you know, we gave those out at the ride. We always have Yipes make stickers for us. Yipes has been amazing. They do our stickers and our shirts for the walk. Um, so we gave those all out. And last year was a little easier. I was, you know, able to walk around to all the ATVs and give them the stickers and bracelets and stuff. Um, and this year I'll be there setting up an AFSP table and setting up the auction. I'm pretty much doing the auction. I've got all of, all of the items and making the list and all of that stuff. So it's gotten easier each year to do stuff. Um, you have a lot yeah. of friends? You and your husband? Um, yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. They're all on board. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And help you out. Yeah, yeah, they're great friends. A lot of the uh, donations are coming from friends and family. So it's been awesome. Money collected goes to, you said a graduating senior? Yes. So the criteria is um, a senior from Williamstown. They have to be from Williamstown. Um, they could live in Orange and still go to, you know, they just have to be graduating from Williamstown School. Um, and it's um, not a student going to a four-year college, like somebody going into a trade. Um, 
inst- or taking college classes part time or something like that. But we prefer a trade because Stephen was not going to be going to college, did not like school, super smart, but did not like school. <laughs> um, and he was he wanted to go into um, his dad owns a granite shed and he was working with him whenever he could and that was his plan like I'm gonna he wanted to go to the tech center and do business management and then go to work with his dad and sort of run the company so that's the sort of kid we're looking for someone who wants to jump right into a field and knows what they're doing and needs help buying supplies um, you know tools and materials whatever they need so Big yeah box. exactly Big so box. that's what the and there's not really scholarships for that so that's what this money goes for is a student to jump into a trade and there's a walk that's going on, I think, this this weekend, right? Yeah, Williamstown School is hosting um, an AFSP Out of Darkness campus walk. So it's for students. Um, and that is Sunday at 10 o'clock, I think. Could be 11. I think it's 10 um, at the Williamstown Middle High School. How, how, what, what are you, what are you hoping to, to do with, with all of this? Are you hoping to, make this obviously it's turning into it's grown its own legs here and turning mm-hmm. it into an annual an annual tradition absolutely yeah the first year we we gave the money from the ride to um the orange county child advocacy advocacy center and then the club was like we want to do this every year let's give it to a student um last year we had i think two applicants this year we had seven so we're hoping it will grow and um and more tvs will come and so for that, you know, helping a student, but my, my bottom line is always to just keep Stephen's memory alive and to spread awareness um, about mental health and suicide prevention and being aware of what's happening in other people's lives and checking in. And having hope. Yeah. yeah. Hope that we can prevent something like this from happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and hoping that... Uh, Someday we'll we'll all be together. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Please stay in touch with us. We will. Thank you. Anything that we can ever do here at the Aired Out Podcast to help out. Um, count us in. Awesome. Thank you so much.